Death Valley Days. Washington Territory in 1853 was a land of few people and many hardships. A social event such as a wedding was something to look forward to, and folks would travel miles just to take part in the function. Such an occasion brought together a lovely young lady and a complete stranger and started the unique courtship of Carrie Huntington. You're more than two hours late, Jim. The stage to Rainier. I'm afraid it's gone, miss. I held up as long as I could, but... But I've simply got to get to Rainier today. Well, that's impossible. There won't be another stage out of here till tomorrow at noon. My sister's getting married in just a, a few hours, or, or maybe even less. <laughs> well, I can't help you none then, miss, so will you please let me get back to my work? Now, look, before I went away to school in Olympia, I promised I would be back in time for this wedding, no matter what happened or who tried to stand in my way. Well, maybe there's a way. Come on. You're hauling that freight to Mount Rainier, ain't you, Henry? I intend to, but don't get hung up here with a lot of unnecessary small talk. His name is Henry Windsor, ma'am, and he's got a heart as big as Mount Rainier. Mr. Windsor, my name is Carrie Huntington, and I've simply got to get to Rainier as soon as possible. I get paid for hauling freight, ma'am, not people. Henry, this is an emergency. Maybe you can bend them rules a little this time. I've waited so long for this day, and... Now? <laughs> It'll take me about 20 minutes to finish loading the wagon. If you're ready by then, all right. If you're not... I will be ready, Mr. Windsor, I will be. It'll take me five minutes to change my dress. <laughs> you waiting and I am sorry, but I won't have time to change my dress in Rainier. There you go, miss. Good luck. Thank you. I think I'll need it. Thank heaven I made it on time. Darling, Mary! Okay. Nothing, nothing could have kept me from being my sister's bridesmaid. First, the horse threw a shoe. Then I missed the stage. I rode the last five miles in a wagon. But it was worth it. Every single solitary bump was worth it to get here on time. Well, you see, dear, Reverend Kingsley came all the way from Portland, and he's very busy, you know. He has several other ceremonies to perform, and... I know, and I've kept him waiting. Well, let's get on with it. Where is everybody? That's what I was trying to tell you, dear. You see... Oh, that's Mr. Windsor. He was good enough to drive me after I missed the stage. What happened? Carrie. Daddy, I told you I'd make it on time. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh... Well, you see, dear, uh, Reverend Kingsley... Oh, I know. Mother's told me all about Reverend Kingsley. Now, will somebody please tell me what has happened? Well, uh, when you didn't show up in time, well, how were we to know you would uh, be here at all today? You can't mean... Yes. I missed the wedding? Judith took your place. I missed the wedding? Please, Carrie, contain yourself, dear... I missed the wedding. I missed the wedding. Well, you're here now. That's important. Oh, and important you don't know thing. what I went through to get here, and you didn't even wait for me. Why, why, I'm not even a part of this family oh, anymore. Oh, you'll always be a part no, of this family. No, not after what happened today. My only sister gets married, and I missed the ceremony. And it's, it's, it's done. It's, it's over with forever. And, and I miss seeing it. Oh. Here. 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 Oh. Wait, you can still be part of the wedding. In fact, after all, you've been through the main part. Remember how we used to play at getting married? We'd act out the entire ceremony like it was real. You mean we could do that here? Why not? You're dressed for the part, and 
And Mr. Windsor can stand beside you as though it were a real wedding. If, if that's what Miss Carey wants, I'd be glad to. No, it's good to see my girl smile again. <laughs> well, dear, you'd better bring in Reverend Kingsley while she is still smiling. Oh, yes. <laughs> Reverend, this is my other daughter. Miss Carey, I presume. How do you do? She's uh, very upset about missing the ceremony, and it would cheer no end if you ran through it again. Oh, you're asking me to perform the ceremony for Miss Carey. And uh, this young man? Uh, Windsor, sir. Henry Windsor. Yes. Very well. Join hands. Henry Windsor, wilt thou take this woman for thy wedded wife? Yes, sir. I'd be proud to. Carrie Huntington, wilt thou take this man for thy wedded husband? Oh, I will. I will. I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Congratulations. Two daughters married the same day. Thank you. Everything has turned out splendidly now. Yes, it sure has. But of course, uh, only one of my daughters was really married. I performed the ceremony, sir, for both daughters. But Carrie's is only just in fun. When I perform a ceremony, sir, it is never in fun. I administered a solemn and sacred oath in the presence of man and God. And I assure you, sir, that the contract entered into between these two young people is binding. Do you mean that I'm married? Really married to him? Those whom God hath joined together this day, let no man put asunder. And then I'll see to it that the marriage is dissolved. Without further embarrassment to you. Well, I'd, I'd rather not, sir. What do you mean? Well, my folks have a, a little farm not more than a six-hour ride from here. If my wife would visit them, I could come around in the evenings and do my court in there. No! You have one week to win her over. Well, I'll need more time. One week. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Oh, I won't go with him. I'll never be his wife, never. Mother... Mother, I wrote to you about the Major. Well, he's about to propose, and and Philip, his father's the senator, and he's getting very serious. You, you can't expect me to just just run off with, with with him. Oh, come on and cheer up, Miss Carey. After all, this is your wedding day. My wedding day. Oh, my wedding day. <laughs> Mr. Windsor, you are making a grave mistake in wanting me for your wife. Can't you see that? No, ma'am. Do you know what I learned at school in Olympia? How to be the wife of a rich and influential man. Now, how to be the, the hostess for all the dinner parties he'd give for his friends and his business associates. I can't sew. I can't cook. I'm not interested in raising a family. You and I are complete strangers. One week is going to make no difference at all. Uh, the part about us being strangers, that isn't true. I never saw you before in my life. About eight years ago... When I joined the militia, they, they sent me to Olympia. I didn't live in Olympia eight years ago. Well, there was a, a store there on, on Main Street where they sold those oil paintings. Still there. And they had a portrait of a girl that I've never been able to forget. And you look just like her. Even that white hat you were wearing. That hat I, I bought for the wedding, that was just a coincidence. Oh, please try and see me like I really am. Don't you ever touch me again and I'll never be your wife, never! 
Don't be afraid. Peaceful as they come. Your squaw? My squaw. You sell? Trade, maybe? Uh, no. You come. something wrong? Medicine man say evil spirit in him. An evil spirit in this tiny dear thing? Mother die at birth. But the baby might die if we go. And if we stay, we'll die. I've been around Indians all my life. I know what he's got on his mind. Why would they harm us for trying to help the chief's grandson? If we stay and the baby dies, they'll stone us to death instead of the chief. If we stay... Do you think he brought us here to give us a choice? No. Night falls soon. Then you go. We've got a choice now. We'd better take it. I can't leave. You can't leave? Just walk away and let this baby die? I'd never forgive myself. I'd never forget it. Do you understand what you're saying? As long as there's a breath in this baby's body, there's a chance we can save him. And that's all I understand. Baby. Dear little baby. You can have all the love you want. All you have to do is reach out for it. Don't you know that? Babies laugh. They cry. Why don't you... You never make a sound. Never. Evil one here yet. No! Hear that? There's nothing wrong with a baby that can holler like that. There's nothing wrong with your grandson. Love and care are good medicine that will protect him from evil spirits. Don't you understand that? Oh. Which way are we going? Rainier. Your week is up, Mr. Windsor. I love you. Didn't that mean anything? You promised you'd take me home. Yeah. I promised. Get up. Goodbye and good luck. Wait a minute. I didn't bring Mr. Windsor home for you to say goodbye to him. I thought I wanted to be the, the grand lady of the manor, rich man's wife. Famous hostess, but I know it's not true. I have to be needed, really needed. The way Henry Windsor needs me. If Henry Windsor courted me for a whole year, he could never prove himself to be more devoted, or strong, or loving. And as for you, it's about time you learned I'm not a portrait to be stared at. I'm a woman, and I happen to be your wife. A marriage by mistake that could have only happened in pioneer days. How do you think it turned out? On June 3rd, 1903, Henry and Carrie Windsor celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. And Carrie at last had the opportunity to play hostess to her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Next week, another true drama from our American past. See you then.